matter and raw material to be mined. This mindset of the dead earth, terra nullius, it was a legal jurisprudence in the times of colonialism. And before that, we talked about the earth as terra madri, as Pachamama, as Vasundara. Vasundara is one of the thousands of names of the living earth in our language in India. And we have a very beautiful ancient saying, which says, Vasudheva Kutumbakam, the earth's family. Vasudha is the earth, Kutum is a family. So I greet you as fellow earth beings. And this ancient Upanishad, the Maha Upanishad, went, goes on to say, this is mine and this is yours. So-and-so is a stranger and so-and-so is a relative. It's all a thinking of a very petty and very narrow mind. An evolved mind sees the whole world as one family. And part of that scene is realizing that all beings are our relatives. The true meaning of green is to see the earth as alive, to see that we are dependent on other creatures for our existence. This pyramid that was created with man on the top and man as man, you know, and women below, and that's patriarchy and all the colored people below, the racism. Um, this is what was called apartheid. Apartheid means in the Boer language, separateness not being connected, not being related. And it was so artificial for one part of humanity to tell another part of humanity that they were not part of humanity just for the color of their skin or their gender or other beings for not being the human species. But all beings are part of the Earth family. And in this two years, I think the virus has told us that it is actually much more strong, much more powerful. Yeah? We always thought size makes power. The virome, the biome that makes us is what we are. And we are 90% other beings. This Newtonian idea of atomistic insular beings that was so challenged by quantum theory. And yet we live on with that insularity. And we had Margaret Thatcher saying, there is nothing like a society. They are only individuals. And of course she was meaning individuals as consumers because you can't have globalization of greed without fragmenting society, breaking their relationships, the relationship between consumers and producers, between communities who help each other. And also our dependence on the earth. Take the simple fact of our breathing. When we do yoga, we say, so hum, I am, you are, therefore I am. You, the beautiful green trees, give me oxygen. That's why I am. I am not un existing unto myself. I'm not insular from the real green, the green of the beautiful green leaf. And I think with your conference, the celebration should shift from the green of money, the green of greed, the green of envy, to the green of the green leaf. Look at its miraculous technology. You know, 3.5 million years ago, first with cyanobacteria and then with plants, the earth was able to pull out carbon dioxide and pull it down from 4,000 parts per million which get the temperature of this earth at 290 degrees. We are troubled about 40 degrees, 48 degrees centigrade, but it was 290 degrees. And how did the earth cool the planet? That little green leaf, it should be our symbol for life, for the future, for the way we work our economies. The green leaf didn't just take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere with the help of the sunlight, and the power of the photosynthesis converted carbon dioxide into our food, into carbohydrates, the molecule of life, and in addition, oxygen as a byproduct. 
This is the economy we have to start to learn being like. Taking less and making more. Converting waste into benefits. Nature knows no waste. Nature knows no monocultures. And when we care for the earth and the earth's democracy, we create more for more beings. And I'll give you a simple example of the movement I have built over the last 37, 38 years on ecological agriculture and agroecology and saving seeds. We were always told native seeds are primitive. And so you needed high yielding varieties. You need chemicals to feed the world. You in Europe are now being told that because of the Ukraine war, you would better have GMOs. Otherwise there's going to be hunger and famine. But the hunger and famine story has been repeated so often to introduce the next system to create hunger and famine. I watched this in my country when the Green Revolution was introduced in the 60s. I was compelled to do a study on it for the United Nations because violence grew in the most prosperous part of India and it didn't hang together. How did prosperity go hand in hand with anger and conflict? And I went to the roots of it and found that at the root of it was the destruction of nature's economy. At the root of it was everything that supports agriculture. The root of it was farmers' indebtedness, the death of soils, the death of rivers, the death of people with a cancer tree. Our work has shown that by serving the earth and just returning the food to the soil, the soil organisms work in such miraculous ways like the green leaf. And they work with the green leaf of the plant Without the mycorrhizal fungi, the plants cannot grow in fullness. Five times more photosynthesis take place when the roots of the plant are getting the benefits of the mycorrhizal fungi. They too are interbeings like we are interbeings. That is earth democracy. That is interconnectedness. That is symbiosis. That is self-organization with interconnection. We think of insularity, and when we realize insularity doesn't work, we think of breaking up. No, but there is another way. And that other way is for councils, for cells, for communities to be self-organized and democratic while interacting in symbiosis because no one is an empire unto themselves. But that means our membranes are not permeable, they're semi-permeable, they're not porous. The toxins shouldn't be able to come into our communities just as much as they should not be able to come into our bodies and create the leaky gut syndrome. That is what the new chronic disease is, where the gut dysbiosis is absolutely destroying here. So I see climate change and the crisis of health as one crisis, a crisis of violating the living systems that make life, their logic, their processes, their interactions, their laws, their limits, because they all have limits. The only thing that doesn't have a limit is a cancer cell. The cancer cell doesn't know when to stop growing. And the cancer cell must destroy the organism on which it is parasitic. All living cells are born and they die and they support each other. That is the true green economy. That is the true green society. Earth's democracy is getting rid of eco apartheid the idea that we are separate from the earth, that we are somehow superior to other beings. And some people, because of the money they've made by not respecting the rights of the earth, have new absolute rights. That's the kind of world we are being told to live in. We have been told by 2030, all that will matter is those who have become billionaires telling us what to understand in terms of food. You know, they're wanting to prepare lab food, just like they created synthetic fertilizers that destroyed the mycorrhizal fungi. They now want to create synthetic food that will further destroy our health because there's patterns related to it. And there is all kinds of money but they will not bear the costs of the ill health. 75% of the chronic diseases of our times come from the same food system that is causing 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions, 75% of desertification of soils, destruction of water, about 80% destruction of biodiversity. 
the little bit of work I do in service of biodiversity and the earth is to give space for every green leaf to thrive wherever it wants to be. There are no weeds in the world. There are no useless people in the world. There are no disposable people in the world. Every being has a place. Every being working in harmony with other beings is the condition for peace, justice, and sustainability. And that is the world we have to create. And as I've written in my book, Earth Democracy, which I wrote after the Seattle, uh, you know, we stopped the World Trade Organization in Seattle. And at that time, we, we were being told uh, the World Trade Organization will supersede all constitutions of the countries. Uh, but it also means that there's nothing like local governance, that not nothing like local democracy. And I've been very critical of corporations setting the rules of our lives on the basis of how much money they can make out of anything because the economy of care is a different economy. It creates more abundance. It creates more food for all. It creates more water for all. It creates more oxygen for all. And that economy of abundance is an economy of sharing of the earth's resources. That is why I talk about reclaiming the commons. And the nine principles I have learned over these decades of work, I've dedicated my life to the earth now for five decades. And uh, the other day, young children were asking me, how have I lasted so long? And I've always said, for love and passion, for life on earth, and ensuring that no one is deprived of their rights. Because all our basic fundamental rights are rooted in the earth's processes. All the artificial requirements are added on, but even the new digital, the electric vehicles will reuse 600 times more minerals and resources according to the International Energy Agency. So it's not that they don't have an ecological footprint. What we have to do is move from a very heavy ecological footprint to a light ecological footprint and a large head, heart and handprint. That's how local economies and local democracies will thrive. And if I have a little time, let me share you my learnings of the last five decades of the principles of earth democracy. Mother Earth is living. Every ecosystem on Earth, every organism in every ecosystem is self-organized and autopoietic. The Earth is not dead matter. The Earth is living. We are part of one interconnected Earth family. Every organism from the smallest microbe to the largest mammal is part of the web of life. All living beings are sentient beings and have intrinsic value and worth. They are not objects to be owned and manipulated. Their value does not come from the market and cannot be reduced to money. Diversity is nature's organizing principle, the basis of emergence, evolution, and resilience. Diversity in forms and expressions, flows and relations in how nature creates value and strength. Nature does not create monocultures and uniformity. Nature works in cycles, the nutrition cycle, the hydrological cycle, the cycle of renewal of seed to seed, Nature's economy is a complex of multiple living circular economies based on ecological cycles of renewal, recycling and the law of return, the law of giving, the law of gratitude. Nature does not work in linear extractive flows. Nature creates zero waste and zero pollution systems, unlike the waste and pollution creating industrial systems driven by external fossil fuel energy. Nature's economy is a negative entropy economy because it's based on life which is based on negative entropy. And Schrodinger, when he asked the question, what is life? He said, it's different from mechanical things because it transcends entropy. It is a negative entropy system. Nature cycles of renewal and regeneration are based on the living currencies of food and water and air and energy. These are what allow us to thrive and live. The first currency is not money. Nature's gifts, are for sustenance of all beings in the earth family, not just for humans. All beings have a right to earth's gifts of sustenance, the right to food, the right to water, the right to fresh air and clean air, the right to be free of toxics, the right to be free. 
Nature's economy is a commons of life and the ecological process of regeneration that sustain life. Care for the earth and her biodiversity is the real economy in which we participate. Our needs are provided through care and love for seed and soil, forests and water, cooperation, mutuality, synergy. These are the principles of nature's economy. Nature's economy is based on creation of abundance to be shared. Nature does not work on the basis of competition and scarcity. All beings cooperate in mutuality and gift giving to create abundance and sustenance for all, making conservation and regeneration the basis of living economies and livelihoods. This, in my view, is the green society. It is the green economy. It is the green the democracy. And I know it is from the bottom up. This new democracy will grow at a time where we face, on the one hand, collapse of ecosystems, and on the other hand, extinction of our species if we do not change the values, the paradigms, and our ways of organizing our production and consumption systems. And I know at your level, you have the power to make that change. I wish you the best. Thank you.